Hey everyone, I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a video to YouTube, but I've been taking a break to work on other projects lately. I've been live streaming on Twitch a lot more, so feel free to follow me at twitch.tv slash IR underscore Cujo. I've also been recording, editing, and uploading a weekly podcast with a friend of mine where we talk about photography and have a lot of laughs. You can check that out on our website, mandapod.com. It's worth a listen even if you know nothing about photography like me. Links in the description for both. Anyways, now that I got that out of the way, let's talk about this video. With the current pandemic going on, we've all probably experienced some episodes of boredom at home. Last weekend, my wife and I grabbed a few new games off Steam and decided we wanted to play them in our living room instead of in our office. I wasn't going to move my gaming PC, so I decided to find the best method of getting my games from my gaming PC to my TV in my living room. I already have a Steam Link and a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, not the B+, and a Raspberry Pi 4 one gig model, and an older Lenovo X1 Carbon with an i5-6200U, 8GB of RAM, and onboard graphics. I tried all four of them out with wired Ethernet and wireless to see how they did, and I also tried the Raspberry Pi 4 with HEVC enabled and disabled. For my testing, I used a Steam controller and I ran GTA 5. This footage you are watching now was all recorded on my gaming PC to give you something to compare against. After this footage, I'll be playing the GTA 5 benchmark to ensure everything was equal during the tests. I took two scenes from the benchmark and cycled through them for each device. Then I took a third scene from the benchmark and played all of them side by side, alternating between the Raspberry Pi 4 with HEVC disabled and enabled. For all of the Raspberry Pis and Steam Link tests, I used the AverMedia Live Gamer Extreme Capture Card and recorded with OBS on the Lenovo using the Quick Sync Encoder. For the Lenovo test, I recorded using OBS's display capture under the same settings. Please ignore the discoloration on the Lenovo tests. This was due to how I recorded the game and not how it looked on my TV. I've stripped the audio from all of the videos due to the fact that I was unable to record the audio on the Raspberry Pi 4 with the capture card, so I didn't want there to be any bias. I originally recorded some footage of GTA 5 over wireless, but the results were so inconsistent I cannot in good faith recommend wireless to anybody. In my testing, both 2.4GHz and 5GHz wireless was so unpredictable that any recording I show wouldn't be an accurate representation of what I actually experienced. If wired ethernet isn't an option, then I recommend using a laptop slash desktop with a good wireless AC card, a Steam Link, or a Raspberry Pi 3 in that order. The Raspberry Pi 4 was mostly unplayable even with the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection.
Hopefully these clips give you an idea of what you can expect from various devices. Getting the recordings for this video has provided me with some good information which I'll outline here for you. First off, all of the solutions provide a decent enough experience where I'd be comfortable playing on any of them if I didn't have any of the others. When you're sitting on the couch actually playing the game, the visual quality difference isn't as noticeable, and if you don't actually sit down and compare them side by side like I did, you won't know what you're missing, so it'll be fine. The best solution in my opinion is using Steam's Remote Play on a Windows PC or laptop on a wired connection. The quality, performance, and input latency is the best of the group, although as you can see in these clips, this is heavily impacted by outside processes, so while the recordings don't look smooth, it's because running other software such as recording with OBS have the potential to impact your gaming experience. Keep in mind I was playing on a dual-core 6th gen i5 with integrated graphics and 8GB of RAM, so a more powerful machine would have handled multitasking much better. Stability over wireless was better than the others, but still inconsistent at times. The biggest downside was getting this set up. It was a pain at first, but once it's set up, it mostly works every time I boot up the Ultrabook now. Mostly meaning, sometimes I need to restart Steam on both my gaming PC and the Ultrabook to get them to see each other. When I'm not recording, this is my preferred method of gaming in my living room. The second best option for me is the Steam Link. To me, it had slightly better visual quality, performance, and input latency compared to the Raspberry Pi 3. It was extremely consistent, and even the wireless experience wasn't bad most of the time. Setup is super easy, and it just worked every time I powered it on. The size is also a huge benefit over using a laptop or desktop. It also didn't have the downside of being affected by outside processes like a laptop or desktop, so it ran the same every time, as long as the network was stable, that is. After using it again, it made me a bit sad that Valve discontinued it because it really is a great option. Third on my list is the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. I was fully expecting this to be the last one on the list, but it actually comes out in a very close third. As I said before, I have the Model B and not the Model B Plus, which has a slightly faster CPU and gigabit ethernet with wireless AC. The experience was pretty good most of the time, with the graphics and performance being on par with the Steam Link, but the input latency was a little more noticeable. Setup was a bit more difficult, but if you're comfortable with SSH and Linux command line, it's easier to set up than my Lenovo was, and it works every time I boot it up without fail. Like the Steam Link, playing over wireless wasn't bad even though there were drops in quality, but performance was consistent even during the drops. It's a suitable replacement for the Steam Link for those that cannot get them now, but the need for a keyboard and mouse does outweigh any size benefit it has. In far last place is the Raspberry Pi 4. This was a big disappointment for me all around. Visual quality was on par with the Raspberry Pi 3, with the 4 even edging it out when you enable HEVC. But the performance was inconsistent, input latency was bad even with the USB 3.0 ports, getting the audio to work was hit or miss, setup was annoying because you need to run a GUI to get the Steam app to launch, unlike the 3 which you can run from the command line, and the improved network speed, both wired and wireless, did not help the performance at all. I'm assuming it's because I have the 1GB model so running the Steam app and a desktop is too much for the hardware but this should be a last resort in my opinion. Once it is set up, it works every time, so at least there's that. So there's my opinion. Use all of that info to form your own. One thing I didn't touch on is price, so it boils down to use what you currently own. If you don't have anything, then look for a Raspberry Pi 3 for around $60 on Amazon with a case. I'll include links to all of the recordings in the description so you can watch them and compare for yourself without YouTube's compression if you'd like. Thanks for watching. Peace out.